All right, so here we are doing a screen capture on my Android phone. Now we're switching to this terminal application. I'll probably put a, if you check the description, I'll probably have a link to this application there. Now here we can actually do package install open SSH and just hit Y for yes. So I'm installing SSH on my uh, Android phone through the terminal app. So instead of installing an actual app from the app store, I installed an app for the terminal, but, um, and that, so the terminal is an app, but once you launch the terminal, you can use that package command to install OpenSSH directly, so you don't need a special SSH program. Now you see here, I'm just typing SSH in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Now, this is going to fail. Um, I'm, I'm recording the audio afterwards, but this is going to fail because I, uh, I didn't type in the username, and it's just trying to log in as the current user that I'm logged in as on my Android phone which is just this random looking thing. It's like U0A211. So so that's that's not going to work at all. So um, let's see here. I'm, I'm going to try it again here. And um, yeah, there's no good way to move the cursor on uh, in this terminal, or at least as far as I can tell right now. So anyways, just backspace that all out. Type in the default user Pi, which is what I'm still using on my Raspberry Pi. And then I type out the IP address again. And there we go. Um, type in my password, which is uh, not showing up. Oh, there we go. It is showing up on the screen. I'm going to have to censor that out. And there we go. We're logged in. So, um... Yeah, just run the uname command. Just just going to run a few commands here just to, you know, test things out and see how neat it is to to access my Raspberry Pi from my phone. So there we, we see we're running on a Raspberry Pi. We can tell that much from that login. And it, this is me. Oh, and here I'm showing you how I found it. So this is an actual app that I installed, the network scanner. I'll have a link to this in the description, or if you check the, the description, I'll have a link to my write-up, which will have a link to this, this app that I used here, probably, when I get around to updating it. But in, in any case, I'll, I'll probably have this video posted before I update that page, but I am going to have a, a, a link in the description to a page that has all the details from this, this whole video. And so, uh, so that tool was just a, it, it's a, a network scanner tool, and it, when we just found out the the IP address of our, um, yes, we we just used this to find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi, and uh, I already knew the IP address, but if you didn't, you would want to use that tool to find the IP of your Raspberry Pi. So, um, but in, anyways, that's just if you wanted to find the IP of your Raspberry Pi, um, and if you didn't know it, so. Um, yeah, and anyways, here's just a few commands, like we run the last command, see who's logged into the Raspberry Pi, see how long it's been up for, it's been, and um, yeah, it hasn't been up for very long in this this video anyways. Um, we can check the CPU info from my cat proc CPU info, it'll tell us, you know, how many cores and stuff are on our, on our Pi, so we see it's like a, a four core system. And you can see how fast each core is. It's like 100 Bago MIPS each. Um, <clears throat> and that, that, that's a Linux thing. I'm pretty sure that's not a thing in any other OS. But Bago MIPS is kind of like a, a like an adjusted, supposedly more accurate way of, of measuring processor performance. And let's see here. Check the RAM, I guess. So free dash H. And there we go. So, so we have some, so we, I, I have the four gig model of the Raspberry Pi 4B that we're, we're logging into here. Um, hopefully you enjoyed watching. Give me a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment down below if you have any comments, criticisms, questions, whatever you want to tell me, anything you want to ask, just leave a comment down below. Um, Hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Um, hit the little bell icon if you want an alert anytime I make a new video. So it'll alert you when I publish new videos. We're going to see a lot, lot more content like this coming up. And a lot of other 
uh, really interesting tech content, whether it be servers, code, or whatever else. So stay tuned for that. And um, as always, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video, and we'll see you next time.